Welcome to Checks and Balances. I'm Michael Vincent. This is James Blair. And this week, the world is going to be taken over by artificial intelligence. But can it replace your two favorite financial advisors? This is Financial Advisors React to ChatGPT giving financial advice. Okay, so this is probably the next evolution of We React to TikTok financial advice. Mike, ChatGPT, have you given it much of a go? Uh, yeah, I use it every now and then, actually. Um, I draw the line with getting it to do some things. Like I was writing a personal message to a friend the other day uh, because they had recently lost their dog. And I was like, I struggle with it. And I was like, oh, no, I'll get ChatGPT to write it. And then I was like, nope, no, no, Mike, you, you're going to write this yourself. Funny you say that. We had a client where um, something sad happened and we sent them some flowers mm. and I was sitting with Mitch and my team be like, what do we put in the note? And then we were like, here's a scenario, what do we put? Yeah. And then ChatGBT kicked it off really <laughs> well. It was like, really sorry to hear about blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, it went into this essay of like, I will always be here for you regardless <laughs> of what happens in your life. We are by your side through thick and thin. And I was just like, what the You heck? and your partner spent some very special time together. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. 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 Um, so we've got some questions that we've put into ChatGPT that we will respond to. Uh, let's see where we're starting. What's better, investments, shares or property? So I think we start off with shares, Mike. We've got some pros and some cons. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, um, I mean, it gives a little preamble at the start just around whether shares or property is a better investment depends on various factors, including your financial goals, risk tolerance, investment horizons, market conditions. You're trying to time the market, chat, GBT. Geographic location, and even personal expertise. Both have their own set of advantages and disadvantage. Let's examine the pros and cons. I'll tell you what, so far... Short of giving a uh, scope of engagement, it's not doing too bad for the preamble. So shares, let's rattle down some pros. First of all, liquidity. Yep, correct. Uh, far more liquid than uh, property. Can't eat a brick. Yep. Uh, diversification, relatively small amount of money. You can diversify across sectors and regions. Yep. Micro investing like shares is. Yeah, um, help you spread the risk. Dividends, some stocks pay dividends, providing regular income stream. Yep. We like a bit of income. Absolutely. Growth potential. Some stocks, especially in the tech or health sectors, have significant growth potential. Yep. Huge Still upside true. with Very little downside. downside. Lower transaction costs. Cost of buying and selling shares typically lower than the cost associated with buying and selling a property. That's true. Is it on a percentage basis? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about the amount of capital that you're putting in. But if I think about the actual transaction cost on a percentage basis, it's probably still lower. Yeah, a percentage. But I mean, I would probably just share. apply a dollar figure yeah, basis yeah, yeah. personally. Okay. Um, so, I mean, all of those pros are pretty, pretty bang pretty on. Spot there's, on yeah. there's not too much I can think of on top of that. Should we wrap the, it up and just go home? <laughs> yeah. The other piece I'd probably talk about in terms of a pro compared to um, property is as a percentage return over the long term. Mm. It does have a higher. Um, a higher return sitting around 10% versus property sitting around 6 Yeah. If we look at the cons, volatility. Mike, apparently shares go up, but they can also go down. Yeah, that's right. I mean, property does go up and down as well, but it, it, you, on the whole, you'd say it's probably far less volatile than, than the share market. Yep. Um, complexity. Stock market requires understanding and analysis without proper research. Might make poorly informed decisions. 100%. But with proper research, a lot of people still make poorly informed decisions. Yeah. If you're picking direct stocks, you're a sucker. You're a gambler. Straight up sucker. Yeah. You got to pick funds. <laughs> um, no control. Yeah. I, I get that. That you're not, you're invest. I mean, but how much control do you have over a property? You're like, you do not have control over what the, the shit, what the business is doing unless you've got a very high allocation like mm. um, BlackRock Black Rock or Vanguard yeah. that apparently run the world these days. Yeah. I mean, I do see that point in relation to property where if, if it's your property, you can decide who tenants it, whether it's tenanted, whether it's Airbnb, if you stick another room in it, how to how to maximize the most uh, revenue out of that investment, whereas with shares you are just kind of along for the ride. The other big one I think is missing here is the, the kind of leverage yeah. that – you can technically borrow money to buy shares. Very complicated in New Zealand. Some quite big implications if you get it wrong. Mm. While the New Zealand system is very much based around the biggest uh, benefit by far with property is leverage, which yeah. you don't have with shares. Yeah. 
All right, so let's go down to property, which has gotten bracket real estate. Uh, pros, tangible asset. It's a physical asset, which some investors write fine reassuring. Yep, hear it all the time. Rental income. If it's rented out, properties can provide a steady stream of income. Yep, I guess. Uh, leverage. Yeah, 100%. You can buy a property at 20% down payment, finance the rest. Yeah, it's a yep. big one. Tax benefits. Depending on the jurisdiction, might be tax deductions related to mortgage interest, property taxes, or other expenses, and potential for appreciation. Over the long term, property values tend to rise, although this can vary by location. Yeah, it summed it up quite nicely. Yeah, I, I think they're pretty much all of the pros that I can think of. The tangible asset thing, I hate. The like, I can touch it and I can feel it. I can drive past it. I want it to be my area so I can yeah. drive past it. Why are you creeping on your investment property, guys? Um, Leave the yeah, alone. Um, but it, we do hear that quite a bit, right? So it is it is right in pointing that out that for a lot of investors, the fact that it is a tangible asset uh, is quite a big thing. Yep. Mm. All right, let's jump into the cons. So the first one, illiquidity. You can sell those shares whenever you want and you can get money quite quick. Mike, selling a house is pretty complicated. Yeah, it's a high transaction cost to sell a house. It's not quick. Um, you know, you're paying... Lawyers, real estate agents, you're probably going to have to get the house cleaned, you know, all that sort of stuff. So a lot of costs that come with it. I also like, hey, we already touched on point three, high transaction costs. Ooh. So let's move on. Maintenance costs as well. Unfortunately, a house does not stay in pristine condition forever. Mm. You're going to have to do some work with it. There's going to be a leak. There's going to be some things to do. Uh, the other piece, Mike, Mike, is market cycles. Yeah, markets go up, markets go down. This is true for shares as well. It's just that with a property, if you pick to sell in a point in time, you are very much at the whim of what the market is doing. With shares, you can drip feed selling them over a longer period of time, reduce that risk. Yeah, for sure. Uh, final thoughts on this. So they talk about risk tolerance, capital, investment horizon. My thoughts on this is pretty much property is a great asset as you are accumulating capital. So as you are getting rich on paper and you do not need income, shares are a much better asset as you start to eat into your capital and want a passive income. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess to be honest, it summed it up quite well. Uh, it has hit some key points there. So I would say in terms of uh, in terms of its advice on this one, apart from not being compliant and giving a scope of advice, uh, I think it's done pretty well. So we're not needed. No, so what are we going to do? Pack it up and go home. Yeah, yeah, so if the financial advice game is done because of chat GBT. You know what we're doing. What are you going to do? Doggy daycare. Yeah. Tamaki Drive. James and I are going to open a doggy daycare. James's pug Harry is going to be the chief puppy officer and it's mm. going to be wicked. Yep. You watch the space. All right, let's move on to the next question. Do your best to explain compounding interest to a child. So let's see what ChatGPT has said. Imagine you have a magic piggy bank. At the end of each week, the piggy bank rewards you by adding more coins based off what you put in. So let's say you start by putting 10 coins aside. At the end of that week, because you put those 10 coins in, the piggy bank has gone, I'm going to put another coin in. So now you've got 11 coins. At the end of the second week, the piggy bank sees your 11 coins and decides to add more to it. So they're going to add 1.1 coins. So now you have 12.1 coins for your original, even though you originally put 10 in. Each week, the piggy bank adds a little bit more based on how many coins you have. The more coins you have, the more new coins the piggy bank adds. So if you let your coins sit and grow in the piggy bank over time, you'll have more and more coins. Not just from that, not just from what you put in, but also from the Magic Piggy Bank's weekly reward. This is like the magic of compounding interest. The more you save and the longer you let it grow, the bigger your treasure becomes. Yeah, that's not too bad. The, the, the issue that I have here with this from ChatGBT, and it's fundamentally missed the point that the piggy bank buddies up with the other piggy banks, syndicates all the money together <laughs> into a mortgage-backed security, and then all of the piggy banks implode at the same times and you have no coins. Yeah. Yep. And then none of the piggy banks go to jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I actually think they did a really good yeah. job of that. We, um, I did an interview this week for News Hub. Ravi might put a link to it somewhere, but it was talking about if an 18-year-old puts $100 a week from 18 to 65 – based on the power of compounding returns, they'll have a million and thirty thousand dollars by the time they hit 65. 230,000 of that was their contributions. 700 odd thousand was the um, compounding returns and the investment returns. Mm. If a 50 year old starts contributing um, 
at that point with a 15 year time horizon, instead of having to save $100 a week, they have to save $860 per week. Yeah. So that's another way of breaking down compounding returns and just how you just have to consistently deploy your capital and be patient. Yeah. I think, look, to be honest, like uh, it's telling a story uh, in a way that kids can understand. Um, and I think that's, yeah, I think it's hit, hit the nail on the head. Um, I guess it probably tells a better story than I do, to be honest. Yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that good of a job. I'm probably yeah. going to steal that one, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> uh, next question from chat to ChatGBT. Do you think superannuation New Zealand will be around when I retire at 65? I'm currently 30. So it says, I can't predict the future, but can give you some trends and some insights. So the first one is Wait. demographic changes. You should oh. be predicting the future, mate. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Uh, that's probably chat GPT-5. That yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the first one, demographic changes. Like many countries, we have an aging population. This means that people will be drawing from superannuation in the system, but there probably won't be as many people working to prop them up, which is definitely what we believe, is you look at the birth rate, you look at the average age, you look at life expectancy, it's all rolling to a position where we're all living longer, there's less young people to pop them up. Yeah, um, economic and fiscal health. Uh, so it's really just talking about the state of the economy uh, and I guess how fiscally responsible and strong the, com- the country is. And to be honest, New Zealand has quite a strong economy uh, for its size, what we produce, how we produce it, uh, and the industries that we're involved in. So I'm not too worried about that in isolation. I think it's just when you put it in combination with everything else like the demographic changes uh, and some of the other things we'll touch on. Yep, policy changes. So there's been talks in the past about um, raising the age of eligibility, means testing uh, has been another one. The problem is any, you know, it doesn't matter what color the government is, any government tackling this is going to be incredibly unpopular. So it's, there's no benefit in anybody really yeah, no, after it. and I think they'll um, I think they'll outsource it I to agree. the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Yep. It's just the obvious way. Like any, I think that is the most responsible thing that a government can do. Mm. Is being like, no single government is ever going to change this really, or if they do, we're so far too late that it will be you know really hurting uh, mm. the books. So we're going to outsource this to an independent body that is independent of the government that will most likely be the Reserve Bank um, and they will probably just have to get the job done. And, you know, like we've bagged on Adrian Orr a little bit, but he does make very tough decisions uh, that impact the economy and people's day-to-day lives. And I'll tell you what, the Reserve Bank governor who's responsible for this, I would I would make sure I'd be like, I want a beach in the Bahamas away <laughs> from this country because yeah. they're going to be coming after me. Yeah, yeah. You can be um, the Reserve Bank governor. You just, you know, you want to be popular. Yeah, no, no, you know, sharpen the knives and get it done. Cool. All right. What have we got next, Mike? Uh, cool. So KiwiSaver. Um, so the KiwiSaver is the superannuation scheme uh, in New Zealand. And this will hopefully be able to pick up some of the slack. Uh, and as I guess a bit of forward planning for when superannuation drops off. Um, it is a really good tool to get people saving for their retirement because you don't have access to it um, and you don't see it come out of your paycheck pretty much. Uh, and then the other thing is though, when the government has to change uh, the, su- uh, the superannuation or the, uh, the pension, this is gonna make it a lot easier because it's not like you're just gonna be rug pulling a, um, a whole a generation of people who are relying on it solely. There will be something else there, which means that they're not gonna be in dire straits. Cool. Okay. And the last one's around public opinion. So um, there's wide, widespread support for this um, for New Zealand superannuation to say exactly where it is, which is not surprising whatsoever. Mm. So any significant changes will be politically sensitive as mentioned. So ChatGPT goes, in conclusion, while it's difficult to predict the future, um, superannuation 35 from 35 years from now, it's plausible that the system might undergo reforms to ensure its sustainability. It's always a good idea to diversify, plan for your own retirement, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think quite a well-balanced discussion with some really good points. Yeah, and if you're hearing us go, these are all quite well-balanced and reasonable answers and thinking, well, yeah, it's doing quite a good job. You've got to remember where it gets all of its information from. It is scanning. Checks and balances? Yeah, yeah. Just the catalog? (laughs) The back catalog of money bites. Uh, (laughs) Great reference. (laughs) Uh, It's scanning, you know, Almost every article, you know, like 
hundreds of thousands of, of, of articles and, and pieces of information to come up with these, if not millions. Uh, so if the majority of the information is right, and we were having this discussion last night with some customers at dinner, um, the advice that a financial advisor gives should roughly be pretty similar. Mm. Yep, yeah, don't get me wrong, there's going to be a little bit of flavor on it, right? Like, I might be saying you should fix month, fix for six months, and another financial mortgage broker might be saying, oh, maybe it's 12 months. It's still a short-term fix for your loan because of where the interest rate cycle is, but we just have our different sort of opinions on that. And if the majority of financial advisors and advice online is fairly similar, it will be giving quite consistent statements. Does that mean that you should be relying on ChatGBT uh, to make your decisions and give you advice? Absolutely not. Uh, but you know, it, if you think about it, that's kind of where it gets it from. Yeah. So the first few have been very sensible answers. The last two are quite a lot of fun. So make sure to stick around to see those ones. The next one, how do I start a conversation about creating a prenup with my partner? <laughs> so it says starting a conversation around a prenup can be delicate as it brings financial concerns into the relationship, typically based on love, trust, and partnership. But you don't love me, Mike. You don't trust me. It's not that I don't trust you. It's just that, you know, I don't trust us. <laughs> <laughs> However, when approached with care, understanding, and respect, it can be a constructive conversation. Here are some key steps and tips to consider. The first one, Mike, what have we got? Well, it says choose the right moment. You know, find somewhere quiet, <laughs> relaxed, peaceful. Uh, you know, make sure it's well in advance of planning out any weddings. I disagree. <laughs> The day of. <laughs> yeah, I fundamentally disagree. You want to get like a moment that has a finite time limit on it, you know, maybe like a car trip or something so that, you know, like this ain't going to drag out into some Lord of the Rings trilogy over like eight hours. You just want something not dead silent, maybe a little bit hectic, uh, a finite time limit on it. Maybe you're both hung over, uh, you know, so just if it's not going well, you go, like, look, I've just got a headache. I really can't be bothered with this yeah. at the moment. I disagree with the car trip, but you're going to get to the location and then just sit in the car and keep arguing. No. no, 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 no. The other one, maybe yeah. Mitre 10, like a really public setting where they're not oh, going to yell at me. How could a Mitre like, 10 meltdown gonna, like, be? And then you can get like a, um, a sausage sizzle afterwards. Like, Mate, you, know. you are going to cop like a garden chair to the face if you do that in Mitre 10 with the <laughs> meltdown. Eh? Like imagine that in the paint aisle. Hannah just like a lot of paint can. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some food just before. That would be my tip. Get them that like really good, <laughs> really, really good meal. They're going to be happy and then hit them with it. Cool. The next one I don't agree with at all. Nah, me neither. Start with I statements. <laughs> I. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should get a prenup. Yeah. I don't really trust you. I have significantly more wealth than you, James. I feel like I'm better than you. Mm. Surely you would want to start with some we statements. Mm. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist and Lord knows I'm not good at these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> the other bit is, I mean, in chat GPT's fans, like some of it makes sense because it goes, this reduces the chance of your partner feeling a uh, attacked or defensive for example mike it makes me feel sad when you go run around to do podcasts with other people makes me feel insecure opposed to me talking about us i'm talking about me and how it makes me impact your decision making you might have to cut the next bit robin <laughs> uh no I, I mean the examples are i've been thinking about our future and how we can protect both of us mm. i probably start with something like look babes we're on a bit of a rocky road here. Uh, you know, economy's down, interest rates are up, we need a prenup. I've got everything, you got nothing. Put it in a poem, you mm -hmm. know? Um, the next one, explain your reasons. Be honest about why you're considering a prenup. This Don't be too honest. <laughs> Look, I reckon this has a finite timeline. <laughs> this is a car trip. This is a yeah. forest fire. Neither of us is going to get out of yeah, yeah. yeah, Yeah. This could be related to concerns about specific assets, past experience, or lessons learned from friends or family. Emph emphasize that it's about protecting both parties and ensuring clarity, not just safeguarding your interests. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe not too honest. Maybe put it in poetry form. Right? But I feel like our relationship is the silence between me pulling the pin on the grenade and the <laughs> grenade opening itself up. <laughs> yeah. Mike, are you a good um, active listener? Nope. <laughs> so the next point, listen actively. What? Give, <laughs> give your partner time to process and respond. Listen to their concerns and feelings without no, interrupting. Maybe, man. You, the interrupting bit's all good. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you say the best defense is a good offense, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> highlight, highlight positive aspects. Um, so yeah, to be honest, so highlighting positive aspects of a prenup is actually quite a good thing. I mean, what we call them contracting out agreements in New Zealand, but you've got to remember that like you are doing this for the couple and for the relationship, not just for yourself. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'd definitely be highlighting the positive aspects. Yep. Next one is very true. Seek professional guidance. So just meeting with a legal professional together to discuss what a prenup entails. Uh, you both need your own legal advice and good luck with that. But pretty much if you cheap out, don't do it properly, it could all be for nothing and you'll end up in the same situation. Yeah, and we did a uh, session with Amanda Donovan from Hague Lion uh, on the podcast, so feel free to watch that one. Very interesting. Uh, listening to her talk about um, prenups, contract out agreements, trusts and everything, definitely worth a listen. Scary. She's yeah. a scary, scary lady. Uh, reiterate your commitment. So while I, <laughs> while I trust you and I want to be in this relationship, I don't really trust you. That is how to go about it. Was that? I think reiterating your commitment probably looks more like James. I love you deeply. But this has a finite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that doesn't mean that you anticipate the relationship ending. It's just one of many financial decisions couple makes, like buying a house or planning for retirement. Yeah, um, be ready for different <laughs> reactions. Be ready for anything. Yeah. When you bring up this conversation, it can go down lots of different ways. My 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 advice is in the chat GBT is try and be behind objects that you can hide behind. Yeah. So duck and weave. Make yeah. sure make sure you've stretched beforehand. Put the Nikes on. Yeah, yeah. You yep. don't want to be wearing the dress shoes yep. coming home from work. Yeah. Yeah, the old deal sleds, they ain't gonna do you yep. well. You don't want to take a Coke Zero can to the forehead. You want to make sure you're ducking and diving. Um, so yeah, <laughs> be ready for anything. Yeah. The last one, which if you're doing this, probably not going well. Consider counselling. Um, ooh, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember where I was the other day, but like, um, someone was flying up. To, I'm speaking to a friend, like, yeah, like my friend of mine's flying up to Auckland. Uh, to have like a counseling session with him and his partner and I was like oh cool like how long they've been together and they're like two and a half months I was like that feels very early <laughs> on to be having counseling but like it's, it's cool yeah He's your own. yeah look people don't really define the relationship I mean you know your boy hasn't been single for a long time but the kids these days they define relationships until you three years you have been single for a long time but you playing away with that Luke Kemi's brother like it's fucking going out of fashion mate. <laughs> like I don't even watch the podcast what James. up Luke call me <laughs> this is devolved into yeah. just chat. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, last question for the day. Yeah. How much should I spend on an engagement ring? I have a great diamond guy in Johannesburg, South Africa. Brett, the diamond guy. If you know him wants his, uh, his number, just let me know. I'm happy to flick it out. Absolute legend. <laughs> You've isolated the South African community. Um, so we've got a few tips to consider the purchase price. I've got some tips. Yep. <laughs> Buy from South Africa. Oh, I can't say the others. <laughs> Sorry, Do you want to talk about your Ruby story in well, the it's UK? The same guy. Uh, can I talk about that? Uh, I feel like enough time's passed. The statute of limitations is yeah. Ravi. Can I talk about that? Yep. Yeah, we got the thumbs up. So I, when I was shopping for an engagement ring, uh, I was wandering around Hatton Garden and I in London. And I was like, man, he's just how you meant to pick something that everyone likes. It's timeless. His fashion was the right price. So, you know, anyway. Didn't get one, just got like an engagement ring band sort of thing for the proposal. Anyway, fast forward to um, buying the diamond. I'm having a, a, a pint with my buddy uh, from South Africa and he was like, mate, I got Brett's number for you, mate. Brett's the diamond guy. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. He's like, yeah, here's a number. Just text Brett. Brett's um, Instagram, uh, or sorry, WhatsApp photo and Apache attack helicopter. Uh -huh. I was like, sick, this is going to go well. Brett flicks me back a spreadsheet of diamonds that went from 2,000 US dollars to like two and a half million US dollars and was like, what do you want? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. He's like, I'm going to be in London in two weeks. I'll bring some diamonds over. Brett flies from South Africa to London. We all meet up at the pub, get pretty drunk. 9.30 at night, we go inside. He just throws out like, I don't know, probably three to $400,000 worth of diamonds on the table and is like just passing them around and stuff. The table sitting next to us, Got up and left. Yeah. They were like, I don't know what's going on here, but I want to be a Didn't you it. say the, the table next to you was like a girl from Tonga and it was her first night like in, in the UK? She was from Samoa and it was she was on a legal exchange from Samoa to the UK and it was her first time out of Samoa and it was her first night in London. Yeah. And we had a little bit of chat beforehand because she was sitting by herself and I was like, I was this table next to you free. And I was like, oh, you know, that's not an English accent. Where are you from? She tells us the story. 
Brit gets these diamonds out and she just like is like, I'm watching human trafficking or yeah. something. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. Good, good gun instinct from yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, there's, there's Mike's story. So the traditional guideline is two to three months on your um of your salary. Mike, do you agree with that? Nah, not really. Yeah. Like I just it's the same as people asking us, what should I um what should I save out of my paycheck, mm. right? It is so variable just depending on what um uh, what you earn, where you're at in your stage of life, what they're expecting, what you're expecting, what you want out of the process, right? Like a diamond, like it's just a fancy rock. Like it doesn't really mean anything at the end of the day. And like, to be honest, most of the big ones you see now aren't really real anyways. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And if you're that couple that's got um, counseling after two months, maybe think of spending- um, Moist night, mate. <laughs> maybe think of spending, uh, getting one of the ones out of the gumball machines. The, the 25 cent rings, that might be a good option. Yeah, I actually really liked the idea of getting like one of the old uh, like mine cut diamonds, like the antique ones. I thought that was super cool. I mean, didn't go for mm. it and probably spend a bit more money, but you know, I thought yeah. it was really cool. Cool. Um, so coming up next, personal financial situation, which Mike has mentioned, pretty much you got to think about your goals, mm. what's going on, your level of income, your asset base, your debts, all that kind of stuff. Next one, which is far more interesting, partner's expectations. Oh, there'd be a wide range of expectations going around, Mike. Yeah, but I don't think the expectations should be out of line with what you can afford anyway. If you're in a relationship, oh, yeah, here you go, giving me giving uh, relationship advice. But I feel like if you're in a relationship where your partner expects a $2 million ring and you're driving a Suzuki Swift, there's a real kind of disconnect there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, maybe maybe this isn't going to work. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nimble. No shade it's on the Swift. Like, yep. great little car. Yeah. Terrible yeah. safety rating. <laughs> and you're not wrong. This, um, listen to my chat. This is what happens when I'm sober, James. I know. Value and <laughs> investment. Um, so, remember, they're marked as an investment. They typically yep. don't appreciate in value like no. stocks or real estate. Consider the purchase as more of an emotional one. It's like, not an investment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're going to sell it like, like down the track, probably hasn't worked out that well, right? My sister got her ring refreshed. Mm. Um, and I was like, I've never heard that term before. And she was like, yeah. And she showed me the picture and all she got was just a much larger diamond. Yep. And I was like, Claire, that's, that's not a refresh. You just wanted to trade it in. It's just an upgrade. Yeah. Cool. Alternatives to traditional rings. So what have we got, Mike? Oh yeah. So like other gemstones, so you could go like rubies. Uh, to your story before, I was also stuck in a ruby deal with someone in South Africa for like two years while COVID happened. Been there, done that. Um, you could go like emeralds, rubies, I don't know, all the other ones. Um, and then maybe some vintage rings as well. So less expensive, more unique. Absolutely. I love the look of the vintage stuff. Those mine cut diamonds are really mm. good. I think the other thing is like when you are buying a ring, the asymmetrical information is absolutely out the gate. No oh, matter yeah. what the person says, you're like, that makes sense. Yeah. Like when you're walking around, they're like, no, no, this this diamond's all about the cut. And you're like, mm. oh, okay, cool. You go see the next one. He's like, mate, cut doesn't mean anything. It's mm. about the clarity. And mm. you're like, oh, it's about the clarity. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, um, I learned a lot in a very short period of time with Hannah's ring mm. and then can't recall any of it. It was yeah. like cramming for an exam. Yeah. Um, the other bits talks about insurance and kind of cultural and social considerations. Remember with insurance, if it's above a certain cap, you have to insure it individually and it's quite expensive. And if it's another, another cap above that, it'll have to be kept in a safe. It's not on the person's hand or otherwise it's not insured. Mm, interesting. Cool. All right. So we're all done with ChatGPT. A range of different topics there. I think ChatGPT all up stood up pretty well. Yeah, I think it did too. Um, it wasn't compliant because it didn't give a scope of advice and clearly outlined that. Didn't outline its fees. Uh, but apart from that, I think it did really well. Quite a bit cheaper than you and I. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So we've done the uh, reacting to TikToks. We've reacted to ChatGPT. Let us know what you want us to react to next. And while you're kind of reacting and looking around, why not react with a little review? Because we're looking to bump those up so we can help more people. Give us a like, give us a, a subscribe on YouTube, and we will catch you next time. Cheers.